All right, I'm back on remora here, this little Harishoff 12 and a half, and I've started planking the starboard side. I've got a couple planks on it already, and I'm gonna show you how I've accomplished it. It's accomplished in a little different manner than most people would do it, and uh, I'm not gonna use a pattern. They're divided runs, so this plank is the same width as this plank, the same width as every plank. There's gonna be seven equal width planks on it. I've redefined this line at the top of the broad straight right here because it is basically in the position I want it to be in, but it's a little bit wavy. So these planks are staying on here, the garboard and the first broad strake, and I'm gonna strip these off and replank it. Our next move actually is to just wrap a new plank around here so that we can go inside and trace it. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Now we're inside Remora here, and you can see that this is the plank that I wrapped around. And like I said, it's up on top of this plank and up on top of this. And what I'm going to do is trace the very bottom of the previous plank onto the back of that plank. And uh, that establishes the shape of the top of that plank. And now we're after the bottom shape. And I've already lined the framing off, like I said, in seven equal parts from the nails that I drove through on the magic line. I've measured that with a metric tape. And the reason why I use a metric tape is because it divides in the 10 system. And it's very easy for me to pick up the division with a pair of dividers and then walk down the frame on the inside rather than the outside and establish my line off lines on the inside of the frame. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna cut this plank on the top edge, then I'm gonna remove the plank that it's lapped up onto here, and then once it's fit to that top edge, then I'm gonna transfer the line off lines onto the bottom edge of the plank and then cut that. Now that we've removed the plank from the boat and set it on the bench, We've put a spacer between it and the bench so that we could saw it without sawing into the bench. We've sawn very close to the line, but we haven't taken the line away. The next step is to pick up a plane and lay it on its side on the bench so that it planes that top edge right to the line at 90 degrees. So the top edge of that plank will be perfectly 90 degrees, and we're going to split that pencil line right down the middle. And the next thing we're going to do is remove the plank that's below the plank that we're going to install. And we're going to scrape up the frames and remove the screws and get all that residual stuff off the outside of the frame. And so our new plank will lay right tight against it. Now, in order to get the bevel to match this plank, I've designed a new system. These are little spaces that I've designed here. They're three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. I've cut a little radius on one side so it lays against the frame and without teetering back and forth, it was flat on the back, it would teeter like this. That's no good for me. I want it to lay nice and flat on there and not move around. I've drilled a hole in it, put a little piece of this plastic coated wire through it so that I can put it on the frame and twist that wire up behind the frame and hold it right in position so they don't keep falling down on us. Now that little spacer is designed so that it spaces the plank out away from the framing and a little bit, maybe a quarter inch outside of the plank that's on there already. And uh, it's gonna put this plank in the proper relativity to that plank so that I can slide a plane along this plank and plane the plank that I'm gonna to install to the proper bevel on the top edge. So we pick up the spaces and wire them onto the frames in the right position, get them on there nice and tight so that when we stretch the plank out over them, they don't move around too much. And then we clamp the plank down nice and tight over it. And now it's in the right position to plane the top edge to a progressive bevel. Like that, that's good enough right there. We put a black magic marker line on the very top outboard edge of the plank that we're going to install. The reason for that is, is that when we start slipboarding this thing to bevel, it's going to be removing the material from the inboard edge of that plank, and it's going to be planed until we start to see that black magic marker line disappear. In effect, what we're doing is planing a progressively changing bevel on the top of the plank that we're going to install to match up to the 90 degree bevel that was sawn and planed onto the plank above it. All right, it's going to almost disappear right now. Once that marker line starts to disappear, we know we've planed all the way across that top surface of the plank, and it's gonna mate up to the plank above it perfectly. The next thing we do is remove it, rip off the spaces that we put on the frame, and, and put the plank back into position. Now, we're up inside the boat again, and we're gonna mark the line off lines that we've got on the frame and onto the back of the plank. That would be represent the very bottom edge of the plank. And then 
we're going to remove it again and saw that edge. But that line has got two purposes. One is that's the bottom edge of the plank. It also tells us where to hollow it to. We're going to hollow the plank after we take it down next time and cut the bottom edge, and that should make the plank fit perfectly. So we nailed down a batten through the line off lines that were put onto the back side of the plank and then draw a nice pencil line. We cut along that pencil line afterwards freehand with a little skill saw, leaving ourselves a little bit of room. And then we take and plane it to 90 degrees using the slipboard technique on the bench, laying flat rather than being up on edge where it's very difficult to control the angle of the planing. All right, we're going to use two different planes to back this plank out. Back aft here, it's got a lot more hollow in it, so we're using this plane. And you can see that this plane is very rounded on the bottom. And what we're trying to do is get the inside of this plank to match up with the shape of the frames. And then as I go forward, I'm actually going to use this plane. It's flat on the bottom, but it has a rounded blade in it. So it's easier to control than this one is. Now, watch this. You want to keep checking to see how much material you've taken out. So you take a straight edge and you put it from one edge of the plank to the other. And the light shines in under the straight edge. And it's very simple to see what shape you've planed into it and where material has to be taken out and where it doesn't. Maybe a touch in there. And you can mark the high spot over here. And pick up your plane again and keep working on those high spots until you've got a nice uniform shape. And that shape might change from one end of the plank to the other because of the curvature of the frames themselves. Once the backing out is complete and checked, we'll fasten the plank into position and go on using exactly the same technique on the rest of the planks on the starboard side.